No need. Don't do that, Luke heard, recognizing the voice of his wife's friend Emily, or M as her friends called her. He had just gotten back from golfing on Saturday, a bit earlier than he had planned. Peeking through the open sliding patio door, he saw his wife and her three friends lounging by the pool, enjoying mimosas. Gianna, his wife, was on a sun lounger with her back to the door. Emily was on her right. Red-haired Layla was directly in front of Gianna, and Avery was on her left, laying on a towel by the pool. He stayed hidden, listening in. Sorry, Em, but I can't stop thinking about it. I felt it, and now I can't stop imagining how it would feel. He heard his wife say, You all talk about it so much, she added. Besides, I'll be careful so Luke won't find out. I won't end up like Chloe. Chloe was their friend known for sharing endless stories of seduction and incredible encounters. He'll find out. They always do. You know what happened to me. And Chloe? Total disaster. I've been divorced for three years now, regretting every foolish choice I made because of her. She was my downfall. And now she'll be yours. Emily responded sadly. It's just this once. I need to know if size really matters. Like Chloe says, his wife insisted. That's not the whole truth, if you must know, Avery chimed in. Avery had been married almost as long as Luke and Gianna. During my college years, I got involved with a guy, and after the initial excitement faded, it became clear he was just another person seeking only physical intimacy. That changed when I met Bert, who showed me he could offer love more profoundly and respectfully than anyone else. His sense of dignity seemed to define him. Honestly, he's not that interesting, she remarked, taking a sip. It's merely a physical thing, and that's it. No romance, nothing more. Layla, who's never been married, chimed in. I cautioned you when you decided to come to our bachelorette party not to get too close to anyone you might dance with. You might think it's just dancing, but their intentions are usually more physical. The real issue is you've let yourself become involved with this guy. You're seeing him whether you realize it or not. I'm not seeing him. We just hang out, dance, and enjoy ourselves. Depot insisted. But last night, he claimed he respects himself highly and expressed his desire for intimacy. I was fine until he made his move. Now, after getting a bit more intimate, I'm curious about it, she admitted with a smile. Just the thought of him sends me soaring. Emily leaned closer to Gianna, seeking comfort. Listen, sister. Chloe isn't living the dream of incredible nightly encounters. She's just as alone as I am. This is the path you're on. I'd give anything to have someone like Luke. He's genuinely kind and friendly to everyone. He's successful in his business and an excellent father, she said as she stood and wrapped a towel around her waist. This may be your downfall, but I want to make it clear now that if Luke leaves you, I'll take my chance with him. Gianna looked up at her friend, troubled. You don't get it. I feel compelled to do this. Just once, you say. Emily's expression was sorrowful. It's never just once. Things don't work that way. I understand. I've been through it, Emily added. Listening in, Luke's frustration boiled over. The thought of his wife, after over two decades together, seeking an affair with someone from a club infuriated him. This is madness, he silently fumed. Overwhelmed with anger, he abruptly moved the screen aside, dislodging it from its railing, and stormed toward the pool. Gianna felt a hand firmly grasp her left arm, pulling her up to face her husband, whose eyes burned with fury, clearly visible to everyone present. He forcefully removed her wedding and engagement rings. My rings, she exclaimed in distress. You're no longer acting as my wife, so you might as well be without these, he declared, his anger palpable as he hurled the rings over the house to the street beyond. Go and pursue your dignity with your new lover. Trembling with rage, he added, I heard everything. I knew you were reckless at parties, but to think you'd start something with some nobody from a bar. Gianna collapsed onto the concrete, overwhelmed by the moment. Layla was the first to stand, attempting to calm Luke. Luke, please, it's not as you think. She hasn't done anything. But he was beyond reason. Enough, he retorted sharply. I'm done with all of this. All of you were aware of the consequences of bringing her to those parties, especially you, Layla, he accused, 
pointing directly at her. Since you're all here, I expect you to help her pack her belongings and remove them from my house immediately. Avery then offered a smile, the same one she often used to influence her husband, and said, You can't possibly mean that. As she reached out to place a comforting hand on his chest, she found herself unexpectedly losing balance and tumbling backwards into the pool. Luke, having pushed Avery into the water, turned his back on the scene. I'll be away for an hour. By the time I return, I expect her to be gone from my house. It seems Layla is about to gain a new housemate. After saying this, Luke entered the house, only to reappear moments later at the door. To Emily, he said, I've heard what you've said, and I'm open to exploring where this goes, but I won't engage in a physical relationship until my divorce is finalized. You'll soon find that these so-called friends of yours won't stick around. Are you okay with that? Emily rose, her demeanor full of dignity. Absolutely, she replied, a smile breaking through. She saw him as a valuable catch, sure that she had learned from her previous errors. A week later, Gianna's desires were realized. At the bachelorette party on Friday, Emily observed as Gianna warmly welcomed her new partner. She recognized him instantly, a notorious figure who frequented clubs with the sole purpose of targeting married women. This man, once a close associate of someone who had led her astray years back, was a reminder of her own deep-seated regrets. She realized that Gianna's life was on the cusp of a pivotal, irreversible change, mirroring the transformation her own life had undergone. Despite her long-standing friendship with Gianna, dating back to their elementary school days and knowing Gianna's steadfast nature, she couldn't shake off the guilt of not intervening. In an attempt to prevent Gianna from repeating her mistakes, she had captured their recent escapades on her phone, aiming to confront Gianna with the reality of her actions, a married woman in the throes of infidelity. Yet these images now served a different purpose, seemingly steering Gianna's husband into her own arms. Perhaps she mused this was the intended outcome all along. Gianna didn't dance with her new beau that evening. After a brief exchange with her friends, she left the club with him heading to his modest, disorderly apartment. This was a monumental moment for Gianna, marking the first time in 21 years she'd been with a man other than Luke. His demand was simple yet direct. Undress me. But the absence of her wedding ring did not go unnoticed. His insistence on seeing the rings on her fingers during their intimate moment was met with a harsh reality. Luke had confiscated them during their last confrontation. Gianna's defense was quick. She hadn't been unfaithful, merely caught in a vulnerable moment of desire. Yet, as she confessed, the man's interest visibly waned, revealing his true motivations, a fetish for the forbidden married women. Gianna's appeal diminished in his eyes without the symbol of her marriage, rendering her just another conquest. The thrill for him lay in the chase, the allure of the unattainable, not in the person standing before him. Recognizing her situation, he laid out the terms. A single night of passion with no strings attached. A proposition fueled by his disdain for emotional attachments. As they moved to the bed, the transactional nature of their encounter became painfully clear. Gianna, driven by a mix of desire and desperation, complied, only to be left alone as he retreated, leaving her to ponder the stark reality of her choices and the fleeting nature of the satisfaction she sought. Her emotions were a mix of sadness and disappointment. The magnitude of the event did little to uplift her spirits, echoing the letdown of her initial encounter. This feeling of disillusionment perfectly encapsulated her state of mind. Driving back to Layla's place, she realized it had been merely an hour since their departure from the club. Had she been with Luke, she imagined, she'd now be basking in the warmth of their intimacy. The option to rejoin her friends at the club crossed her mind. Tears mared Gianna's face as she felt a profound sense of loneliness, opting for an Uber ride to Layla's now vacant apartment. Meanwhile, Luke devoted a week to laying the groundwork for his forthcoming chapter in life. His methodical approach to problems, often perceived as aloofness by others, involved compartmentalizing his troubles. His successful career afforded him the luxury of delegation, focusing his efforts on personal matters. Aware of the impending legal notice for Gianna at her workplace come Monday, his settlement proposal bore no malice. After two decades together, marked by her steadfast role as a wife and mother, 
Their bond had altered when she sought more freedom, akin to her regular leisurely gatherings. Since the installation of the pool, their home had become a weekend retreat for Gianna and her friends, a scenario Lou tolerated despite occasionally resenting the invasion of his space. As Gianna ventured into new territories, Luke made a two-hour journey to share a meal with their son at university, intending to discuss the divorce personally, emulating his father's approach. Despite foreseeing this as a preventive measure for future discord, Luke recognized his mother's differing viewpoint. The following Saturday, post-lunch, Luke and his son returned home. Luke hoped the visit wouldn't distract his son from his academic responsibilities. Later, Layla inquired about Gianna's escapade, only to learn of her discontent. Despite anticipating an exhilarating experience fueled by her friend's narratives, Gianna faced disappointment yet again. Layla suggested the need for a more compatible partner, boasting about two acquaintances who were informed of each other and might be persuaded into a night of indulgence. The evening progressed from dining out to dancing, eventually leading back to Layla's apartment. Layla's choice left the other man for Gianna. As they relaxed on the sofa, his adept kissing momentarily captivated her. However, his subsequent actions, disregarding her protests, led to another disheartening encounter. Gianna pondered if such unsatisfying experiences were to define her future. Escaping to the bathroom, she sought to cleanse herself of the night's events, feeling sullied by the consecutive disappointing encounters. The comforting warmth of the shower was abruptly interrupted by an unwelcome presence. Despite her resistance, he insinuated himself closer, prompting Gianna to defensively shatter a soap dish against his head, the pieces scattering in all directions. Shocked, he crashed to the shower floor, allowing Gianna to scramble past him. She perched herself atop the toilet, crying out for Stefa's help. While Luke was deep in slumber on the living room couch, a makeshift bed since Gianna's departure. The thought of sharing their matrimonial bed, possibly tainted by her infidelities, kept him anchored to the couch. A knock interrupted his uneasy sleep. Clad in just boxers and a t-shirt, Luke approached the door warily. A glance through the peephole would have deterred him, but unawares, he opened it to find Chloe, a vision of allure yet a bearer of turmoil, likened to a tempting yet spoiled apple. It was Chloe, standing provocatively dressed, propositioning Luke with the promise of a night filled with pleasure, her advances promptly rebuffed. Despite her persistence, Luke firmly rejected her, shutting the door on her insinuations and her smile that hinted at her enjoyment of the challenge. Come Sunday, Luke found himself drawn to a place he hadn't visited in two decades, a church, seeking solace and perhaps guidance, away from the Baptist roots of his upbringing to a more inclusive non-denominational sanctuary. The sermon, emphasizing personal growth and altruism, struck a chord with him, inspiring a contemplation of mentoring as a means to extend his success to others. Returning home, he was confronted by a distressed Gianna, locked out and accusatory. His mention of church as his morning refuge was met with her tirade, to which he suggested, perhaps provocatively, that she might find solace in faith rather than in seeking pleasure elsewhere. Certainly, here's a rewritten version of your passage. I'm certain there are men at church who would be interested in you. He remarked coldly as she followed him inside, the door now unlocked. Gianna immediately began to plead her case, expressing her desire to return home, her inability to cohabit with Layla, and how unproductive Layla's lifestyle seemed to her. No, you can't stay here, he countered firmly. I've released you from a commitment you were bound to violate, if you haven't already, and about that urgent need for intimacy you mentioned. I don't want to hear it. Gianna stopped short, her intention to claim her dislike for it unspoken as Luke interjected, Don't bother lying. I've known you too well for too long. It's clear you've sought out what you left us for. There's no going back now. You're aware of my stance. Her mind drifted to a conversation last year, when she had mentioned attending a baccalaureate party. He had bluntly warned her that it spelled infidelity in their marriage sooner or later. Despite her reluctance to agree, deep down she knew he was right. He had argued that married women behaving like singles was a recipe for disaster, potentially harming his business if clients disapproved of her actions. When Gianna reached out for a consoling hug, he stepped back. Tomorrow, 
I'll have Tracy, my new assistant, compile a list of affordable apartments for you and send it to your work email. You can take your bedroom furniture and whatever else you need. As tears formed in her eyes, she protested, I can't survive on my salary alone. You have to support me. Luke remained unyielding. You didn't need to work. I've always provided, but you chose to. You've saved nothing and live paycheck to paycheck. That has to change. Post-divorce, you'll need to learn budget management. Remember, many manage on less than what you make. He escorted her to her car, adding, You'll receive the divorce papers at work on Wednesday, unless you prefer picking them up from Abe's office on Tuesday discreetly. Despite her hopes, the divorce papers arrived as promised, ending over two decades of getting her way with Luke. This realization hit Gianna hard. The Luke who once loved her was vastly different from the Luke who had chosen to let her go. The mood was decidedly different at Avery's house on Wednesday evening, where alcohol flowed without restraint. Avery, Layla, and a distraught Gianna were rapidly drowning their sorrows when Chloe made her entrance, wine and whiskey in tow, unclear on the nature of the gathering. As the night wore on and inhibitions lowered, Chloe boldly declared her intent to charm Luke, igniting laughter among the inebriated group. Avery chimed in with a smirk. You'll have to get in line behind Emily. Ha! Chloe exclaimed, rising to her feet, confidently gliding her hands over her sculpted figure. Does she honestly believe her post-baby physique stands a chance against this? She mused aloud, revealing her failed attempt to seduce Luke, who had rejected her advances. What's on your mind, Gianna? I could marry Luke, quit working, enjoy endless intimacy, and live lavishly. She speculated with a mischievous smile. Or perhaps I'll marry him, stick around for a bit, then divorce. Loyalty was never my strong suit. It was at this moment that Gianna started to grasp the gravity of her actions. Her drinking intensified, yet she found solace in calls to her parents. When Luke opened his door, he was greeted by Emily and her kids, the former bearing a homemade casserole. Figured you could use some company tonight, she said. They dined on the terrace, and afterwards, Emily listened as Luke shared his feelings about the recent upheaval since Gianna's departure. Her kids were busy playing in the backyard. I'm aware the others are probably comforting her right now, after today's shock. But I wanted to be here with you. Emily confessed, valuing their friendship. Her visit was brief, mindful of her children's school day ahead. Yet she departed with a soft kiss on Luke's lips a gesture filled with intention and lingering promise. Luke was jarred awake between 1.30 and 2 o'clock a.m. by Diane's drunken call, oscillating between tears and reproaches. How could you do this to us? Don't you care at all? For Luke, this underscored Gianna's lack of love, evident in her nightlife escapades. After the third call, he finally disconnected, planning to return her call once she sobered up. He waited until 11 a.m. to call her back. Diane, unapologetic about the previous night's outburst, dodged his inquiry about the apartment Tracy had found. Instead, she pleaded to return home. No, Luke stood firm. Given your infidelities, our marriage is irrevocably broken. You didn't even wait to be legally notified before indulging. I hope it was worth it. Just a week, and you pursued others. His conversation was interrupted by a knock. Emily stood at the door, a paper bag in hand. One moment, he said to Gianna, signaling a pause. You've made your choice clear, Gianna. You've opted for the single, divorced life you seem to desire. Sign the paperwork. If you don't finalize things with Tracy tomorrow, I'll handle the apartment myself, covering the first two months' rent. That's the end of it. Emily's brought lunch over, he concluded, ending the call to welcome his unexpected guest. By six o'clock in the evening, Stephanie found herself weary of Gianna's relentless chatter. Girl, you need to let it go. Emily isn't snatching your man. You might not want to hear it, but you were the one who pursued that guy, and you got him. What did Luke get? It dawned on him that he couldn't meet his wife's desires after over twenty years of marriage. Sorry, sis but no man would tolerate that. The Luke I know won't take you back. Gianna refused to entertain Stephanie's words. But you didn't try to stop me, she retorted, earning a puzzled look from Layla. Why should I? When you want something, you go after it. 
That's always been you. Plus, I own up to my choices. You messed up. And now you want Luke to act like it never happened. Be thankful he doesn't know about the rest of your mess. Slip into something daring and let's lift your spirits. Two weeks elapsed, with Gianna encountering several underwhelming lovers. On a Monday evening, Bert and Avery escorted Gianna to view the apartment Luke had prepared for her. He had furnished it with items from their shared bedroom and all her beloved possessions. The place was freshly painted and immaculately cleaned, even the fridge stocked. Bert proved himself a caring husband, assisting Gianna as Avery requested, ensuring she felt supported in her transition. Avery sensed Gianna's reluctance to finalize the divorce, clinging to hope that Luke would miss her terribly and take her back to their idyllic life. She refrained from disclosing Emily's frequent lunches with Luke, aware it would only worsen Gianna's distress. To alleviate Gianna's loneliness, Avery suggested hosting a housewarming bachelorette bash at her new apartment on Friday. In a call to Emily, Avery extended the invitation. Hey sis, we're gathering at Gianna's new place on Friday. It'd be great to catch up. It's been ages. She hesitated, masking her recent visits to Luke's under the guise of caring for her children. Their dad's been away for work, so I've been tied up. A little white lie. She had indeed visited Luke, but remained there briefly, merely testing his boundaries, certain he wouldn't stray. I'll try to arrange someone to watch them on Friday. They're teenagers, not chicks needing constant care. But they'll trash the place, Emily countered. They're capable of handling themselves for a bit. Besides, someday I might need my security deposit back. Luke eagerly anticipated his lunches with Emily, a habit born from his commitment to work and success. It's the little things that matter sometimes. Emily's workplace was conveniently just two blocks away from Luke's, allowing occasional lunches together that he genuinely appreciated. Of all Gianna's friends, Emily was the only one Luke truly enjoyed spending time with. The others he merely tolerated to maintain harmony. During one of their lunches on a Thursday, Emily casually asked Luke if he could watch her kids so she could attend Gianna's housewarming. Certainly, he replied, as he genuinely enjoyed the company of her three boys, aged 13, 15, and 16, whom he saw as surrogate nephews, bonding over basketball games reminiscent of his time with his own son. When the day arrived, Luke picked up Emily's boys and treated them to baseball and go-kart racing, cherishing the opportunity to fill the void left by not playing sports with his own son. As Emily approached Gianna's house, she was greeted by Avery and Lele raising their glasses of wine, but her entrance was overshadowed by Chloe's abrupt push into the room, barking a greeting. Tension simmered beneath the surface between Emily and Gianna, palpable yet unspoken. However, as the evening wore on and alcohol flowed, inhibitions loosened. A drunken Avery suggested that they should all rally to reunite Gianna with her ex, Jax, which stung Emily, knowing her own feelings for Luke. Chloe, in her inebriated state, brazenly asserted that Gianna couldn't win Luke back until she slept with him, crudely describing him in explicit terms. Emily felt compelled to call out Chloe's inappropriate remarks, but Chloe retaliated with jabs at Emily's own romantic prospects, suggesting she pursue Jax instead. Feeling the weight of her friend's superficiality and Chloe's disrespectful comments about Luke, Emily finally spoke up. Pushed to her limit, Gianna lashed out, accusing Emily of trying to steal her husband based on her lunchtime visits to Luke's office. Emily, at the threshold of departure, delivered her unfiltered thoughts for the first time, confronting Gianna's hypocrisy and infidelities. She made it clear that Luke was no longer Gianna's to claim, having been discarded in favor of other men. Emily didn't hold back, alluding to Gianna's promiscuity and failed relationships, exposing a truth that lingered beneath the surface of their friendship. Avery, you seem to believe you can snag a boyfriend anytime because Bert knows his wife is taller than him, but cheating is never justified. I've learned that lesson the hard way, and Layla, your shallow attitude ensures you'll never find a lasting marriage. No man wants a woman like you around, except for obligatory dates, but they won't stick around for anything meaningful. And Chloe, if every man you slept with left a mark like a needle, you'd resemble a porcupine. After a pause, she continued, I'm not pursuing Luke, 
I'm giving him the space he needs, but the truth is out now. Gianna, I'll come for your husband. When he's mine, he won't even remember either of you. I've learned from my own experiences that a good husband is hard to come by. He'll never regret being with me. I promise you that. With those words, she stormed out, slamming the door behind her. Emily returned home, feeling the weight of solitude in her empty apartment. Knowing the boys were with Luke, she hesitated to be alone. Dialing Luke's number, he welcomed her down to the baseball practice booth in half an hour, joking about his sore butt from go-karting. Finding Luke and her children at the booth, she watched with a smile as Luke bonded with the boys. His grin widened when he noticed her, motioning for her to join. Reluctantly accepting a bat, she swung with Luke's guidance, feeling safe and cared for in his presence. Despite missing every pitch, she laughed until tears flowed, realizing she loved Luke. As they drove home together, Luke volunteered to help with the boys and their belongings, suggesting breakfast the next morning, to which Emily agreed. Over breakfast, they bonded further, Emily recounting the events of the previous evening at Gianna's. Meanwhile, Luke received a message from Bert, detailing the girl's drunken escapade, pondering if Gianna was involved in the incident. He found it amusing how she stood up to them, though he pondered why she departed so abruptly, secretly hoping it was for his sake. He acknowledged the selfishness of such a wish, recognizing everyone harbors desires like that. Wanting to be forthright, he began, I'll be honest with you. Last night when I held you in the batting cage, it just felt right. Maybe you felt it too? She nodded in agreement, admitting she felt safe and protected her cheeks flushing with the confession. To be frank, I think I've been in love with you for years, he confessed. I know you're married, but I'll wait for you, however long it takes. Pulling an envelope from her purse, she handed it to him, explaining, I know I have a history, and you know it too. When you kicked Gianna out, I promised to do anything to be with you. The next Monday, I got tested for STDs. You'll see I'm clean. I haven't been intimate with a man in over a year, to be honest. He admired her honesty, acknowledging her past mistakes and recognizing her growth. Emily revealed her struggles during her divorce, confessing to seeking affection to fill a void, even if it meant settling for less than she deserved. But I've learned my lessons. Being a good mother is my priority now, she affirmed. Curious, he inquired about her role in Gianna's escapades to which she confessed trying to dissuade her, but ultimately supporting her to prevent repeat mistakes. He teased her for being ineffective at the task, their hands intertwining across the table. Expressing his genuine feelings, he recounted their connection and his sincerity in wanting to pursue her. He appreciated her as a friend, a confidant, and a great mother. As Emily shared her insecurities about her appearance and financial struggles, he reassured her of his admiration and affection promising to support her in every way possible. He gently squeezed her hands, flashing a devilish grin. You look fantastic, beautiful and curvy. I've always had a soft spot for curves, he confessed with a mischievous twinkle in his eye. The waitress brought their check, smiling at his comment as they prepared to leave. With a suggestive smile, he asked Emily if she had any plans for the day. In response, she pressed her body against his, planting a light kiss on his lips. Well, there's something I haven't done in a long time. It's been over a year now, she hinted. Meanwhile, Luke stood in his underpants, scrutinizing himself in the bathroom mirror. It had been 25 years since he'd been intimate with anyone other than his soon-to-be ex-wife. Feeling a mix of excitement and insecurity, he reminded himself of his father's advice. Volume in those places where it should be. Taking a deep breath, he joined Emily in bed, anticipating her warm embrace. However, he was surprised to find her lying beneath the covers, her body language suggesting apprehension. Expressing her nervousness, Emily requested to be turned around, explaining that she wanted to feel more comfortable before fully exposing herself. Understanding her hesitation, Luke reassured her, expressing his admiration for her body regardless of any perceived flaws. As they embraced, his touch ignited a passion exchange of kisses, each exploring the other with fervor. Overwhelmed by desire, they surrendered to the intimacy, their connection deepening with each caress and embrace. 
Afterward, exhausted and content, they lay entwined in each other's arms. Luke held Emily close, cherishing the moment and feeling a sense of rejuvenation. Reflecting on his past with Gianna, he acknowledged the profound impact it had on him. But in Emily's embrace, he found solace and a renewed sense of masculinity. Awakening from their shared slumber, Luke gazed at Emily with affection, realizing the depth of his feelings for her. In his mind, she transformed into Rebecca, a mature woman he could envision falling in love with. He savored their time together, relishing the opportunity to bond with her and her sons, rediscovering the joy of fatherhood that had long eluded him. He gently kissed her, rousing her from slumber. Rebecca, he whispered, the words carrying a weight of sincerity. I don't know where this will lead, but I don't want to be with anyone else but you. I can't assume you feel the same, but I'd be overjoyed if you did. Her response was a tender kiss, sealing their unspoken agreement. I couldn't ask for anything better, she murmured with a smile, until her eyes fell upon the alarm clock. Damn, it's been over an hour already. The boys will be worried, she realized, slipping out of bed. As Luke watched her, he saw her body for the first time and found her absolutely perfect, despite any insecurities she might have had about her weight. Can I use your shower? she asked, and though Luke entertained thoughts of joining her, he knew that being a mother took precedence at that moment. Walking her to the car, he bid her farewell with a kiss, requesting her return with the boys in a couple of hours to ensure their comfort with his relationship with their mother. When Rebecca returned with her sons, she found Luke had prepared a feast on the grill, complete with hamburgers, potato salad, beans, and relish. After they ate, Luke pulled the boys aside while Rebecca tidied up the table. Gathering around the fire, Luke addressed them earnestly. Guys, I want to talk to you like men. I really like your mom and would like to date her romantically if that's okay with you. It's important that you approve because I really like you too. Can I date your mom? The boys exchanged glances, processing the weight of Luke's question. After a moment's silence, the eldest son, the de facto head of the household, gave his consent. Yes, sir, we would like that, he said. Luke rose and hugged each of the boys tightly, feeling the significance of the moment. As the youngest son expressed his hope for Luke to be their new dad, Rebecca was overcome with emotion. Wiping away tears, she watched as her boys played basketball with Luke and his brothers, feeling grateful for the positive influence he could bring to their lives. Amidst their joy, however, their peace was disrupted by the doorbell. While Luke remained engrossed in the basketball game, Rebecca answered the door to find Gianna on the other side. As Gianna barged in, Rebecca firmly reminded her of her new living arrangements, asserting Luke's ownership of the house. With emotions running high, Gianna demanded to know where her husband was, oblivious to the changes that had taken place in her absence. He had to come and get me out. Rebecca intervened as Gianna stormed in. Why do you think it's his responsibility to bail you out of prison? She retorted firmly. He's my husband. It's his duty. Gianna insisted. No, it's not his duty to rescue you from the consequences of public drinking. It's your responsibility to avoid getting arrested in the first place. Emily interjected, her tone laced with frustration. As Jana frantically searched the house, Rebecca stood her ground. I know why you're here, but it won't work. You left him, and I'm here to support him so he doesn't spiral into darkness like my ex did. She explained, fixing Gianna with a pointed stare. You're in the same place I was three years ago. You messed up and lost your husband because of things a married woman shouldn't do. And now you'll have to face the consequences. The loneliness is a heavy toll. Every night, I return to a cold, silent apartment, deprived of the love and laughter of a family. You may have children, but your son is grown, and your husband is divorcing you. You'll find yourself sitting alone at 45, waiting for Friday and Saturday nights to fill the void with any man you can find. Rebecca continued, her words cutting through Gianna's defenses. Who will keep you warm at night? She challenged. And here's some dating advice. You might find men with good qualities, but most are so self-centered they have nothing to offer beyond sex. They'll seduce other women, neglect their jobs, and leave you feeling empty. Rebecca continued, her tone somber. You may look good, but you won't find a husband at a bar. 
And speaking of which, I didn't plan it, but I made love to Luke this morning. She confessed, raising her hand to stop Gianna's protests. We both know he's an incredible lover. So caring, so passionate, Rebecca admitted with a smile. And he's the best I've ever had. I thought I was searching for something better, but I realized I already had it. She concluded, watching Gianna's reaction carefully. As Emily offered to fetch Luke, Gianna watched him play basketball with the boys, a sense of regret washing over her. He's a great father, she murmured, realizing what she had lost. Turning to her friend, she asked softly, Do you love him? Yes, Emily affirmed, her voice filled with determination. If he chooses me, I'll spend my life making him happy, she vowed. Overwhelmed with emotion, Gianna sobbed, recognizing the depth of her mistake. Today, I came here with the intention of seducing him once more, even if it's just for one last time. Even if the sex is miserable, if he makes love to you, it's a sign that he's moving on. I know him inside out. He wouldn't do this if there was a chance for us. Gianna confessed, her voice heavy with resignation. Turning towards the door, she paused, then looked back. Tell him I'll find a lawyer and sign the papers, she instructed before walking out. Rebecca relayed Gianna's visit to Luke, informing him that Gianna's lawyer would be in touch. Luke gathered Rebecca and the boys, sending them home with a tender kiss and closing the car door behind them. Seven months later, Gianna requested a brief meeting with Luke and his lawyer before their court appearance. With a heavy heart, Luke knew Diane needed closure. Gianna apologized for her selfishness and admitted her regret for straying. She acknowledged Luke's incredible qualities and lamented her misguided actions with her friends. Luke listened somberly, knowing that their relationship had reached its end. I tried to make you understand that married women cannot act like single women, he began, recounting the instances where he turned a blind eye to her indiscretions. But enough is enough. When I heard you talk about pursuing another man, I knew it was over for us. If you don't want me, then let him have you. Luke stated firmly, rising to his feet. He walked towards the door, delivering his final words with a mix of sadness and resolution. Have a good life, Gianna. You'll always be a part of mine. We have a son, and there will be occasions where we'll cross paths. I'll be civil and helpful when needed, but we'll never share a bed again. I've always been faithful, and that won't change. Luke concluded, closing the door behind him as Gianna broke down in tears.